So, let's get into this whole process. Pork chops. They've been around forever, and I'm only now just complaining about them. There's a million recipes out there. You can put them on the grill, sear them in a cast iron pan. You can bake them, broil them, braise them, whatever. Oh. I'm gonna show you how to make an ultimate pork chop today that you can make from any pork shoulder you get at your butcher store or grocery store, and you're gonna transform it through the power of sous vide into an ultimate pork chop 2.0. Regular pork chops, they're usually lacking in flavor. They're a little bland. Mostly that's because they're lean and they just don't have a lot of activity in those muscles, in the actual loin muscle. The texture is, I would say, lacking just because it goes from like a steaky, dry chop to a firm, hard, dry chop if you overcook it really easily. And then also, they can be pretty expensive actually as far as like pork goes. It's one of the more expensive cuts of pork on the pig, on the pork. It's one of the more expensive cuts on the pork. The ultimate pork chop is jam-packed with flavor. And not only that, is you can really turn it into any texture you want. So you can make it more steaky pork chop texture or you can cook it a little bit further and have it be super succulent and super brazy pork chop texture actually. And it's super cheap and you can get the ingredients you need anywhere today. You just need the power of sous vide. Let's get to it. This is a pork shoulder. You've probably seen them everywhere at every grocery store, like maybe halves of ones. Also, they call them pork butts. If I could only have one cut of pig meat, it would be this piece right here. More specifically, it would be this piece right here. So this side. Both of these cuts are really, really good, but this side has a big shoulder blade scapula running through it, which cuts down the middle of it. And you can braise this and it slides right out and that's great. But if I want to cut a steak, I want to cut from this section, which is the collar, basically. This is what your butcher would do. Take the shoulder side, this is the neck side, and he would cut it, and he runs right into that big old shoulder blade. And if they have a bandsaw, they have a bandsaw, they'll do that, but otherwise, let's, let's see here. I just need to get through this like first part here. Ta-da. Now we have, whoa, the best hunk of pork tough cut there is. From here, I'm gonna put a little bit of salt on it. I'm gonna put it in a Ziploc bag and I'm gonna cook it sous vide. I'm gonna cook it 60C, anywhere from 16 to 48 hours. That's a good graphic for Rick too. You can do it on screen. From 16 to 48 hours. It will range from pork chop steaky to pork chop succulent brazy. You don't have to turn the temperature up, but you just leave it in. This guy real quick, normally I would just cook this whole thing like this, but I just want to show you. Do, 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 do. This is really what we're looking at. Mm -mm. See how the muscle's darker? This is lighter. There's a lot more hemoglobin, a lot more activity in all these little muscles. In between all these muscles, there's a lot more collagen, you know, so there's like myosin, it's muscle wrap, it's all the like collagen around the muscle fibers that breaks down and turns into gelatin and makes it like really juicy and really delicious. This guy doesn't have a lot about that. It's got some on the rib and that's about it. But I can't really unlock the collagen or gelatin in the rib with this pork chop because by the time I do that to the pork chop, this loin is gonna be really, really dry and like papery cardboard. With this guy, I can cook it sous vide, 16 to 24 to 48 hours, no problem. And it's just gonna get more and more and more tender and more and more ultimate. We have our amazing cut of meat called the collar. What I like to do, I've got about 1700 grams of insane potential here. I like to put like a half a percent of salt is it kind of helps firm up the fat and snappy up the fat, it slightly cures it. You don't want to season it and put 1% or 2% salt in there. Can I throw spices and herbs and all sorts of flavors and all that sort of goodness in here right now? Yes, you can. However, I'm not because this isn't a recipe, this is a technique. This guy goes, You've seen this a million times. You put the meat in the bag and you put the bag in the bath. And if you ever 
looking at it going like, mm, I don't know if there's enough water in here to cover the meat. There isn't. Add some more. So this is the part where we go from a plain old pork shoulder or a collar and we turn it into an ultimate pork chop. What I like to do is cook a sous vide, take it out, chill it just like this. Whoop, goes in the ice water or put it in your fridge. Once it's chilled, I like to cut it into pork chops and that's it. This is like a lot of sous vide projects, the part where it looks like a little ugly. You know, it's like sometimes we call it like alien baby or something. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Doesn't look like it, but it's gold. All I do is like bam, 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 grab a couple of these little paper towels, pat them off. It's cold, so it's firm. If this thing just came out of sous vide, you could break it apart, you know, um, just because it's so tender. Remember when we cut that little pork blade, you might find there's a little bit of bone or something here from the blade, but now that it's cooked sous vide, you can just like get rid of it. Dun, 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 dun. It's ready to become chops. This is where you get to decide, do I want a bunch of thin ones? Do I want thick ones? So far, this is also the same process. I like to do my ultimate holiday ham. Um, from here, I score it, like slice, 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 and glaze it and roast it. But I do that with a bunch of spices. The whole point is you're transforming a tough cut and you're unlocking juicy and you're unlocking umami and you're unlocking tenderness. I like a thick pork chop, you know? I want a big sear time, slice off that edge. Oh my God, look at that, that creamy fat. All those different muscles. Let's do four thick ones. Yeah, I like it. These are like inch and a halfers. Oh yeah. Look at that. Bonk. It's like a dinosaur pork chop. These are mondo. Check it out. We have our ultimate pork chops. We're done. If I was gonna use them in the next day or so, and if I was gonna grill them, I'd just throw them on a tray. Ba -ba -da -ba. Coming for later. It'll help them grill nicer and sear nicer if I want because they'll be like drying out on the surface a bit. If I want to store them for later, I'm just gonna throw them in Ziploc bags, easy peasy. If I want to do like a perfect reheat and not stress about it, I can take these out of the fridge or the freezer and then boop, right back into Jewel. And then from there, I can throw them on the grill and just grill them until they look good or in a pan, sear them until they look good, whatever you want to do. From here, I'm gonna cook this guy, put him in a pan, classic, same thing here. We're gonna look at him, check him out, see what we like and don't like. Pork chop, ultimate pork chop. This guy, let's just slice into him. Look how bright white that is though. Woo! It's like someone in Seattle in February. This one, this is more like day two in Tulum. Right off the bat, you'll see this pork chop. It's bright white. This one's got a little dark color to it. That's because there's a bunch more active muscles in the ultimate pork chop. All those more active muscles are wrapped in connective tissue, which when you cook sous vide, they unwind and dissolve into gelatin, which makes it juicier. They both got the same kind of crust though, which is charred umami, crusty. You got all this Maillard stuff going on. I guess I'll try this pork chop. I don't have a lot of flavor in the meat. It's like pappier, tougher, chewier, dry. It's just lean and there's not a lot of character to it. And then also they're just kind of expensive as far as pork goes. It's not the pork chop's fault. It's what we did to it at the farm. This guy, let's try this one. Mm. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm sorry, but there's no contest here. The ultimate pork chop is way more flavorful. It has more fat that has more flavor and it's got way more juiciness from the gelatin that's unwound out of the collagen. The one thing you can't see on the board is it's cheaper. It's way cheaper. It's just like no contest. Now that I've made the ultimate pork chop cut and we've invented a brand new product, a brand new cut of meat together, from here you can do whatever you want. So you can do something like char sui, which is like broil it until it's like glassy and crunchy and glazy. We've got recipes on chessas.com like that. You dip it in mustard and seeds. You've all had it, it's amazing. You can put it on the grill and serve it with like Brussels sprouts or roasted charred Brussels sprouts or something like that. You can even throw it in a pan and sear it, classic, and just have like a mushroom cream sauce with a pork chop. It's amazing. There's all sorts of recipes on chessas.com, not just those. Don't forget, 
check it out. Time temperature table, jewel, all that good stuff. Go to chefsons.com and get cooking. Rick won't let me cuss anymore. That's the best pork chop I've ever had. Subscribe to our channel and visit chefsteps.com for more tips, recipes, guides, and tools to help you level up in the kitchen.